It's a little sensitive, you know, the gas pedal. Marie Porter has been a professional driver for a decade. I get to travel around, see all kinds of things. But today, her drive is a bit different. See, her truck is in Alameda, California. And she's, well, she's at a startup office in San Francisco, driving the truck remotely. It's kind of like playing a video game. This remote work may be all that's left for human drivers if robots take the wheel. I think it's the future. But what kind of future will it be? As this technology unfolds, it's going to be extraordinarily disruptive. Self-driving vehicles may make traveling down the highway safer and more efficient, but they may also upset one of the most common jobs in America. Side mirror too. Yeah. Porter drives for Starsky Robotics, a San Francisco startup with an ambitious vision of the future of trucking. We came out of this from the gate hoping to make trucks drive without a person sitting in them. That's why what we're doing is we're making trucks autonomous when they're on the highway, but teleoperated or remote control off of it. Starsky isn't the only company trying to cut costs with autonomous technology. Last year, Wired rode along with startup Otto as it made its first autonomous delivery. And companies like Peloton and Volvo Trucks are also working on platooning rigs together for efficiency. Trucking, with its long stretches of autopilot-ready highway, may be the first part of the driving industry to be automated at scale. I personally wouldn't want to be a truck driver. And I know it's one of the most common jobs in America. Computer scientist Sebastian Thrun laid the groundwork for making self-driving vehicles a reality more than a decade ago. I bet many of our truck drivers are actually very creative people just get no chance to be creative because they're sitting in this truck all day. I think humanity has always succeeded in, in finding more creative and more interesting jobs than past jobs went away. And I think for somebody to say, well, they're boring and we cut those type of boring uh, uh, jobs out of, out of the, the mix, I think are naive to why a lot of people go to work. They go to work to support themselves and their families. They don't necessarily love what they do. Union leader Rome Alois says his members are worried. Their concerns are their jobs. You know, what's going to happen? Are they going to be replaced? Are these trucks going to have um, somebody in them? To some drivers, autonomous trucks still feel like science fiction. I don't see any trucker worry about it. To us, it's like another idea, like the flying car. Is it going to happen? No. They probably try it. I don't know when this is going to happen. Do you know when it's going to happen? <laughs> But Marie Porter, Starsky remote test driver, can see change on the horizon. I know it, I'm going to put me out of a job. <laughs> yeah. And it might be more than just her job. Driving from taxis to trucks employs nearly 4 million Americans. Proponents say autonomous vehicles could make getting around more efficient, less expensive, and safer. It's potentially going to save hundreds of thousands, millions of lives. I mean, but the other side of that is that it's going to put millions upon millions of jobs at risk. Truck driving is actually the most common occupation in nearly 30 U.S. states. And it's, of course, one of the few remaining blue-collar occupations that is really reliable and pays that good, solid, middle-class income. Truckers earn a median $41,000 a year. Many make more. But there's a shortage of roughly 50,000 truck drivers in the US, and that's likely to grow. And that's because trucking isn't easy. Just ask Ali Knight. It's a hard life. You actually have to maintain a large vehicle over the road for three to four weeks, even a couple of months at a time. It's definitely a lifestyle. It's not just a job. Good morning, Internet! Knight has parlayed her driving time into a side hustle as a YouTube vlogger. She's cautiously optimistic about the self-driving future. I may actually get more filming done, which would be great. <laughs> when she vlogged about that auto delivery run, her fellow truckers weighed in. And a lot of people were immediately turned off by the idea of having a computer driving a massive vehicle like this. They don't trust them, they don't think that they can handle it, they don't think the, the data or the technology is there. Some autonomous driving experts agree and say it could be decades before we see fleets of driverless trucks on the roads. 
It's relatively easy to stage a demonstration that does something that looks impressive and that looks like it's ready, but to get to the point that a system is really ready for public use is vastly more complicated and challenging than doing a one-off demo. Steve Schladover has been working on self-driving vehicle technology for more than four decades. The critical aspect of that is making the system safe. What do you have to do to ensure that that system is going to behave properly under every condition it's going to experience? This is something that drivers do all the time, but getting a software system to be as responsive to unexpected circumstances is still a huge technical challenge. Knight says just the weather that she sees on a drive is enough to give her pause about computers taking the wheel, at least right now. Ice, snow, heavy rain, tornadoes. There's so much stuff out here to deal with on a daily basis. On the day we rode with Knight, she had to crawl under her rig and hammer on her brakes to get them to work. That's just one of the scenarios she thinks will keep drivers like her in the cab, even if they aren't actually doing most of the driving. Banging on frozen brakes with a hammer to loosen them up so that your tires start rolling. Um, Checking the oil level and replacing the fluids, checking your coolant. But at Starsky, the plan is to take the human out of the truck entirely. Highway driving will be computer controlled, and drivers like Porter would remotely pilot the first and last difficult miles. What we're hoping to do is to make driving go from a job where you're where you're spending weeks in isolation to uh, to an office job where you, you go in, you have your friends who you talk talk about the game with or on the water cooler. Then you sit down, you work a you know a couple hours, and maybe you go take a bathroom break, you go work a couple more hours. Whether Starsky's plan is the future remains to be seen, but everyone can agree there's a shift coming to trucking. We're getting closer every day, and it's going to happen. It's most definitely going to happen.